Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club and please subscribe to stay updated with the channel. In this film we look at flight over water and the associated dangers. Ditching is a deliberate emergency landing on water, it is not an uncontrolled impact and yet data from the UK and the USA indicate that 88% of ditchings are carried out with few injuries to pilots or passengers. However, despite most ditchings being survivable, about half of the survivors die before help arrives. Flight over water in a gyroplane inevitably has additional risks that can't really be mitigated, so for normal operations, long sea crossings are not really recommended. Not only are single engine aircraft vulnerable, but with the extra drag means it's impossible to create a meaningful distance to glide without power and remain VFR. Added to which, crossings can be very tiring on the eyes, because unless you have a gin clear day, there is a lack of clear horizon, especially later in the day over the sea, as can be seen in this clip. It's a reason why a favourite UK to France route is Lid to La Touque. Now every flying club will have people that don't consider the dangers associated with flight over water and regularly make the trip especially in the summer, in jeans and t-shirt. But it doesn't make it right. And if you fly in water with similar temperatures and sea states common to the North Sea, you must always fly with additional specialist equipment. That being an immersion suit, a specialist life jacket, flares, and a personal locator beacon. The primary threats to survival in cold water are cold shock, inhalation of seawater, a decline in the core temperature and ultimately the loss of will to survive. If you do find yourself in a situation that requires you to ditch, select best glide speed, make radio calls and look for any vessels that might be of immediate assistance once in the sea. You should have already made clear your brief to any passengers prior to the flight, but now is the time to reiterate key points. Remember cold shock will impede communication once in the sea. Ensure immersion suits are fully zipped up and belts are tight. Then position the aircraft so as to ditch across the swell, not into the face of rising swell. For a gyroplane, a landing gear is always fixed, but we can land at very low airspeed, so aim to touch the sea at minimum forward speed. We're nearly in May, and this is the UK sea temperature. Cold shock is the likely cause of half annual UK water deaths and is the dominant concern at temperatures less than 10 degrees centigrade. Involuntary gasping on entry to the water to breath hold time less than 10 seconds and increase in breathing rate, the risk of inhaling water is the likely outcome of persons succumbing to cold shock at sea and drowning is likely within minutes. I'll leave you with a Royal Navy film on the effects of cold shock and then hopefully Next time you cross water, you'll go properly equipped. Fly safely. Tests at the Institute of Naval Medicine tell their own story. I'm glad I can sit down while we're doing this. Just adjust this, isn't it? Just checking the pacemaker, actually. Is he ticking, Mike? Yes, looking fine. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Right, we're going to dress okay. you. Okay. Passion colours. <laughs> So I'm an animal, am I? Call yourself what you like, you're still doing it there. Sure. <laughs> Slightly larger than normal breath in, hold it for as long as you can under the water. Come to the surface by releasing the seat belt and stay in the water until we tell you to get out. Good stuff. We've got some nice baseline data. Okay? Yeah, go. Okay, there we go then, Duncan. Here we go. This water, by the way, is at 10 degrees Celsius. That's a typical temperature off our coastline on a sunny day in June.
Even when protected by warm clothing, a person can only expect to hold their breath for about 10 seconds in water below 15 degrees Celsius. This initial cold shock response, an overwhelming need to gasp in air, is often followed by uncontrolled and rapid breathing. At this stage, the chances of breathing in water and drowning are highest, particularly with wave splash in choppy or rough seas. Adding to the problems, an extended period of rapid breathing flushes carbon dioxide out of the body. This can cause muscle cramps. Not surprisingly, the heart beats faster. At the same time, the outer blood vessels narrow to conserve body heat. Unfortunately, these responses combine to push blood pressure up. This increases the risk of heart failure and brain hemorrhage. Looking very good indeed. Keep it up. Luckily, cold shock usually lasts That's for only two or three minutes. As the body adjusts, the heartbeat and respiration slowly return to more normal levels. Clearly, the best chance of survival is not to swim until breathing has settled. Well done, Doctor. Coping with the first few minutes, however, is no guarantee of continued survival over the first half hour. In cold water, even strong swimmers have difficulty coordinating swim stroke with breathing. Once again, the temperature is just 10 degrees. Most people keep their head up to avoid the cold, leaving the body in an awkward vertical position. But much worse than that, the arms and legs actually become weaker and more rigid as they cool down. Over a period of time, no one can manage anything like their distance in warm water. As poor headway is made, panic can only make matters worse. Unfortunately, drowning is all too often the inevitable result. Okay, Sharon, stop there. Stop there. Go across to the side. Okay, Sharon, that's it. Well done. Just rest there. Not a bad effort for a swimmer in a test tank. 